We are in the Bible. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad we're in the Bible? We're reading through the Bible, Genesis to Revelation from January to December. All the messages this year entitled God Said It because God has spoken. God is outside of time. He has spoken into time. God spoke into the void of nothingness and created everything by the very word of his mouth. He spoke and it came to be. He said, let there be light, light. He said, let there be trees, trees. So God has spoken. When you look at creation, you're seeing the manifestation of God's spoken word. So you don't look at a shrimp and go, I wonder where that came from. God said, let there be shrimp. Sautéed in butter. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. No, sorry. I shouldn't go there with that kind of thing. But anyway, all right. Second thing is, is we have the written word of God, which is the Bible. God has given it by his own breath. He breathed it out, inspired it over 40 writers, two continents, and, and just through the, the hundreds of years that it was written. But he's preserved it for us so that we have a confidence in God's written word, the Bible. I believe it from beginning to end. All 66 books, uh, it, I tell people all the time, people say, well, there are contradictions. I have a problem with the Bible. Well, then it's your contradiction and your problem because God's the author, all right? God calls us to read it, discern by the, by the Spirit of God, and obey it, okay? Not edit it. You don't get to cut out the parts you don't like. All right, me either. I don't get to cut out the parts I don't like. Uh, the third thing is the, the living word of God, which is Jesus himself. Jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Glory is of the only begotten of the Father. So we are making our way through Scripture, and today we're in Acts. We, we were in Acts last week. I think Acts 4 was it last week. This week we're in, no, Acts 3. This week we're in Acts 19. Acts chapter 19, and, and there's some good passages along here. Uh, as you're reading through, if you're reading through the Bible, uh, you read the account this week of, of the consequences of falling asleep in worship. How many of you read it? Oh, Eutychus sitting in the window on the third floor, and Paul's preaching all night, not just an hour. Paul's preaching all night long, or Peter, one of them, anyway. Anyway, preaching and preaching and preaching. Eutychus falls asleep, falls out the window, three stories, dead on the ground. Of course, he got raised from the dead. See? So don't fall asleep. Now, the joke about that is, is that I had a guy, I think he was up in Maryland. He said, he said, oh, I don't ever fall asleep in church while you're preaching. And I was like, cool. I said, why? He said, because you might walk back there and embarrass me. <laughs> so, so now we're in Acts chapter 19. I want to ask this question. This is what I want you to think about before I read it and we pray together. Is this important? Is it important that we're here? Uh, it, 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 all right, why? Let's read. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly, boldly over a period of three months, arguing and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But when some became hardened and would not believe, slandering the way in front of the crowd, he withdrew from them, taking the disciples and conducted discussions every day in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years so that all the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of God. Let's pray. God, we praise you and thank you just for the privilege we have of gathering like this to come together and to worship and sing songs of, of praise and thanksgiving. And God, we want to worship you. God, we want to declare your worth not just in this room or as a group, but in our lives. God, we want to live out your worth in our lives that you are actually our priority, that you are the main thing. And so, God, we gather this morning. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. And so, God, we want to lift high the name of Jesus today and be grateful and thankful for what you've accomplished, as, as Scott said a minute ago, for what you have accomplished in saving us. And so, God, we praise you this morning. And so, God, let us let us consider this morning the, the first century church and, and the things that became priorities for them. And, and God, I thank you. Uh, for, for what was going on in their midst. God, we want to see you move in our midst, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I, I remember being a kid. Like this morning, I remember it. Uh, and I remember begging mom and daddy not to have to go to big church. Anybody there with me? Well, Man, I go to Sunday school because we played in Sunday school. 
right? I, I made some of the best paper airplanes in Sunday school that I have ever made in my life, right? I've told y'all the story about uh, uh, we had we didn't, we didn't have we had a window in our Sunday school room when I was in the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade boys class, and uh, Mr. Doug Shannon, who was my Sunday school teacher, uh, he he put stuff in his hair. It's probably like Brill cream or something. I don't know. But anyway, and it, it, it was, shall I just say his hair went from this side to this side. And so I was sitting at the opposite end of the table from Mr. Shannon. Mr. Shannon was at it, and I was at this end, and there was my friends all down the sides of this table. And, and we'd open the window because we liked some daylight. Actually, we opened the window because that was the target. Okay. And we were all taking papers and making paper airplanes. So Mr. Shannon's looking at his book and sharing with us the Sunday school lesson. <clears throat> and about that time, he looked up about the time I went for launch. And I, and as he looked up, man, that paper airplane stuck right in that hair. <laughs> right there. Well, my mom and dad found out about that one. <clears throat> but I remember coming out of Sunday school and just saying, Ma, do we have to go to big church? Do we have to go to big church? So the question is, is this important? Is this a priority for us? Now, collectively, we would say, yes, yes, we're here. See, and y'all are going to question, well, Bobby, why are you picking on us? We're the ones that are here. But the question comes back to, why is it important? What are the reasons that gathering like this are important to us? I like this passage because as far as we know, outside of the, 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 the Solomon's portico or colonnade that we talked about last week, this is, this is kind of the first reference of the, the first century church coming together in a hall or in a place where they collected, uh, gathered in worship outside of the synagogues. Because Paul's uh, practice in his missionary journeys was to always go into a town and first go to the synagogues, the meeting places of the Jewish people in each town, and he would go and reason with them. And it even uses the word arguing in the translation this morning. But he went to argue with them about the kingdom of God and, and about who Jesus is and was and, and what he accomplished on the cross and his resurrection. And he got arguments everywhere he went. As a matter of fact, he got stoned, he got beaten, he got kicked out of town. He got, he got a lot of trouble for preaching Jesus, okay? And yet he still did it. And it says that when, when they rose up against him and hardened their hearts, they would not believe and they began to slander, talk bad about the body of Christ in front of the crowd, right? That he withdrew from them and took the followers of Jesus, the disciples, and they conducted discussions every day, not just Sundays, Every day in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. Now, if you go look up Tyrannus, we don't even know who he was. We think from his name he was a pretty overbearing guy because his name comes from the same root as tyrant. Okay? But the idea is, is that he obviously owned property. He was obviously some kind of leading figure in Ephesus because uh, when you begin this chapter, chapter 19, it says that Apollos, while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul was traveling through the interior and came to Ephesus. Okay? And, and at Ephesus, this is where all this is taking place. And he spent two years in Ephesus uh, conducting discussions. I love that. See, we know, that's not what we do here. Y'all don't have an opportunity to discuss unless y'all get out the door, right? I'm just telling you what it says here. He was conducting discussions every day in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years. Now listen to this. This is really important. So that all the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. That, 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 that's an important little line there. So, so out of Ephesus, which is right on the coastal area of Asia Minor, and, and it's sort of that port city, metropolitan kind of city. There's a lot of, it's a crossroads kind of thing up and down the coast and inland and, and the ships. I've actually been to Ephesus. <clears throat> it's actually way inland now because of all the, the silt and settling from the, 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 the water moving into the sea and you kind of take the, the boat into 
<clears throat> Casa DC, something like that. And then you can take a bus and go to the ancient city of Ephesus. And, and I, I, I saw the arena where the silversmith started the, started the riot and everything. And I saw the, the creases in the, the marble granite thing roadway where, where the wagons would travel on for years and years and years. They would travel on that and they, they bore these grooves in there and, 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 and it was cool. To know that I was standing in the same place that most likely Paul and the disciples had stood. And I just thought, wow, you know. But Ephesus was this sort of cosmopolitan hub of Asia Minor. And so people would come and go. And so when they would come into town and Paul is conducting discussions and Paul is teaching about Jesus and Paul is sharing the word of God and walking back through the history of the Old Testament to substantiate and and actually I'm going to use the word to prove to the people that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. And it was important. It was important to go to the synagogue. It was important to meet in Tyrannus' hall. Why? Because, folks, the message that God has given us is not just a message of salvation that, that we can just enjoy. Remember a while ago I said, you know, if God blesses you, you're supposed to be a blessing. If God has given you Jesus and given you the salvation that we can only have in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, then God expects you to give Jesus away. God expects us all to have Jesus conversations. I tell people, I say, yeah, I don't care where you are. You can have a Jesus conversation. You just got to figure out how to get into it. Right? I mean, guess what? This week it's easy. People ask you, how are you doing? Just say, I'm thankful. Right? Why are you thankful? Well, first of all, because God saved me. You get people in this culture going, <laughs> oh, never mind, man. I don't want to ask you any questions. Or you'll get people say, really? God saved you from what? You see, to get into the conversation is to use the the, 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 the sort of the... Surra- now, Paul went to the synagogue, and as a former Pharisee in the synagogue, he would be invited to speak, right? And so he would sit down with them and read from the, the law or the Torah or the whatever, He'd read from the Old Testament books, prophets, whatever, and, and he would begin to, to break it down for them. And many times we see in the New Testament where they use the book of Isaiah, Man, because Isaiah, that's, that's good prophecy regarding the Messiah. And then he would begin to say, and Jesus fulfilled that one, and Jesus fulfilled that one, and Jesus fulfilled that one, and then Jesus was beaten and crucified, and he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again. And many of the disciples, and, and you'll read this in 1 Corinthians. We'll get there eventually as we read through the Bible. But in 1 Corinthians, I love the line where he says, and many who saw him are alive today see that so what are they giving them what it is so important about this meeting together it's because when people get together they talk about what jesus did and is doing you see to tell other people what jesus has accomplished so i'll just throw it out there don't raise your hand because then it'd be confession time and we'd have to stop do you know jesus are you saved Do you have the salvation that that God offers in the shed blood of Christ? Because if you have that salvation, then you have something to talk about. Now, I'm sometimes troubled that when when I talk to Christians, and, 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 you know, that's our title from Antioch, Christians, a lot of times when I ask them about their walk with Jesus, they'll say, oh yeah, I got saved when I was eight. Or I got baptized when I was 12. See, a lot of times I want to know what Jesus is doing this week. What is it you've seen God do in your life yesterday? So many of you and some of you became aware that my mom had surgery and she was in the hospital. And so I was up there Monday, Tuesday, got back here Wednesday. And and, uh, she came home and she was doing okay for about 12 hours. And so she's back in the hospital this morning. I talked to my dad yesterday, and she's doing better now. But what they need is, I, so I, I didn't know. I, I thought this thing lifted engines out of a car. But anyway, there's this thing called this Hoyer lift. Anybody know what that is? It picks people up, right? And you crank on it like this, and, and they're not cheap, 
right? So uh, my daddy said, we need to get one of those lifts. He'd been looking online. And I was like, Pop, that's, that cost a lot. I said, give me some time. I'll find one. Give me some time. So I'm looking at eBay and Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and all those kind of places. And, you know, there, there's one up in Fayetteville for 250 There's one in Durham for 300 And I'm thinking, okay, well, I can drive there and then drive to Mom and Daddy's and deliver it and all that sort of thing. And so, so Friday evening, I'm still looking, you know, I'm shopping. This is my kind of shopping, y'all. Don't take me to the mall. Okay. I'm shopping. I'm online and boom, on Craigslist. This lift popped up in Leland for a hundred dollars. And I was just like, Thank you, God. Right? Now, you don't have to give credit to God for that, but I do. Right? Because in the moment that I'm looking for it, the answer's there. And I was like, so I called that. Hey Pop, I got a lift. I'll bring it up to you this week. Right? Hundred bucks. Daddy was like, see, he had found one online at eBay for 150 so I win. <laughs> right? You see what I mean? No, anyway. What has God done in your life this week? I like giving God the, the praise and honor and credit for the little things, y'all, the details. When God answers the small prayers, reminds you of who he is. And when he answers the small prayers, folks, He's telling you how important you are to him. You know that? Man, God. It's a tough week. But anyway, God cares about my mom and falling and getting her up off the ground so she and my dad can take care of each other. And that's something. So who do I? I guess what? I'm telling a hundred people about it right now. Giving God glory for the little things. Folks, we need to be talking to people around us about the little things that God does in our lives. Just reminding us that he loves us. Just reminding us that he saved us. Just reminding us that he meets with us. You know, God never sleeps or slumbers. So when you wake up in the morning, he's there. Don't ignore him. Don't disregard him. Don't take him for granted. In the hall, I love it that they had a, I love it that Tyrannus had a hall. I love it that they found a place to meet, right? For instance, I mean, I, no, well, like I said, we don't know, it's a lecture hall, so that's what it's called in the text. Somebody owns it, so are they renting it? Or maybe Tyrannus is a follower. Maybe he's one of the disciples, and he said, hey, y'all, since we can't meet at the, at the synagogue, let's meet at my place. Third floor, that building. Don't sit in the window. Nah, we don't know. But here is my point. My point is this, is that God's people meet together around what God is doing. Is it important that we meet like this? Sure it is. I mean, we're told in, in, in Hebrews not to forsake meeting together. Actually, most translations say gathering. Ha, I like that. Um, my point is, is that meeting together like this is important. But why? Why? This is where the body of Christ, this is where believers come together to celebrate together what God has done and is doing. This is worship. This is where we declare God's worth in our lives. Now, it's not the only place, man. You go do it wherever you are. Anywhere in the world you can have Jesus conversations. Anywhere in the world you can praise God with other people. Anywhere that you are, you can give the testimony of what God's done in your life. You know? I mean, I, I, I like this text because it says, you know, Paul went to, he was in Ephesus. He went to the synagogue like he does. He speaks boldly for three months. Every day he's in the synagogue speaking about Jesus, persuading, arguing and persuading them about the kingdom of God. When the opposition rises up, because guess what? He's seen it before. You know, folks from one town go to the next town and stir up the people in that town against what Paul is preaching. So in Ephesus, since he's going to spend two years there, ultimately, they find another place to meet. Is this the first, shall we say it, 
church meeting place? No, because they met in Solomon's port. Because the church is not the building, y'all. The church is not the hall. The church is not the meeting room. This isn't the church. You see? You're the church. You're the body of Christ. You're the believers who come together to praise and worship God and to, wor- and to declare his worth and to tell each other what God's done this week. So how are we doing? Is this important? Sure, it's important. Why? Because this is where we gather to lift high the name of Jesus. This is where we gather to proclaim salvation. This is where we gather to to proclaim freedom and liberty to the captives. You see? This is where we get to come together and talk about victory. Victory over sin and death. So is it important? Yes, it's important. Now, here's the challenging part of this thing. How important is it to you and me? How important is it to us? Right? Man, we got folks watching. My sister watches at 8, 10 every Sunday morning. Hey, Melanie. But I I made sure that Bobby and I waved at Joyce this morning. Um, Chuck and Julie... Um, last name skipped me. Uh, Chuck introduced me to his mom last night at the Christmas tree light. He said, this is my mom from New York. I was like, well, hey, mom from New York. <laughs> She's a little short lady. He said, yeah, she watches you every Sunday. I was like, well, cool. Uh, my mom wishes she could, but she can't figure out how to do the computer. You see? I just think it's cool. Yeah, there are people watching. I mean, a lot of people watch online now, and that's great. But can I just tell you something? I love listening to podcasts, and I love listening to other preachers. And I love, but, but if I'm not in the room with you, I'm missing something. I'm missing the interaction of the body, the iron sharpening iron, the encouragement of other Christians. I'm missing the smiles. I'm missing the joy. I'm missing... Now, granted, there is a value to sitting on the couch in your pajamas and worshiping. I'm not going to deny that right now. But when the body of Christ comes together, it's important. It's a priority. It means something. I remember hearing the story. I'd use a different illustration, but a pastor went to this old fellow's house and trying to encourage him to come to church. Old fellow said, well, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. I don't have to be in church to be a Christian. He said, no, you're right. So he took the tongs out of the fireplace thing and he reached over there and he grabbed one of those coals out of the fireplace and he pulled it out onto the hearth and then he just left it there. Right, and obviously that coal was red, and then it turned dark, and then it turned ash looking, and then it went out. And he said, "See, that's the danger of not being in the fire, of not being together with the body." My illustration was a little more harsh. I'd say, all right, yes, you don't have to meet together with the body, but let's do an experiment. Let's cut off your little finger and see how long it lives apart from the body. See, I'm a little harsher than some people, right? Is it important? Yes, it's important. Why is it important? Because this is where we come together to celebrate together what God is doing. Jesus' conversations, not just here, anywhere everywhere don't miss it don't miss it see that that's kind of the overarching theme of the year god said it don't miss it see god's got paul preaching in tyrannus's hall i think it's cool i'm gonna finish with this little story Uh, many of you know my son and he'll be horrified that i'm telling this story but i'm gonna tell it anyway uh, we moved here when he was six, but when he was three or four years old, he used to have to hang out with me at the church building quite a bit. So one day he got missing, and Doyle Chambers, who was our youth minister at the time, had a little girl named uh, Celia, Cela, 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 and they were just a few months apart, right? 
And so Doyle would be in his office and Seela and Eli would be playing in the church somewhere. Now, uh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't helicopter them. So, so one day I got to wonder, well, I wonder where Eli and Seela are. So I go down to the hall to, to the uh, old men's Sunday school class, right? And Eli's standing in a chair behind the lectern like this and Seela's sitting in a chair over there. And I said, what are y'all doing? And he says, playing church. <laughs> I said, and what are you doing? He said, I'm preaching. <laughs> I laughed. He said, and she's the, she's the music director <laughs> like that. So, you know, here's what I want to say about that. Kids get it. But they get it from us. If this is important to you, it'll be important to those around you. Now, they get older, they might reject it, they might turn away from it, yeah. But guess what? If they see it in you, then you've got something to talk about. Jesus conversations, anywhere, everywhere, all right? This week, it's all about gratitude. Why are you thankful? Because of Jesus, okay? If you don't know Jesus, we want you to know Jesus this morning. We want to introduce you. I want to tell you about salvation. You know right now, if I put the question out there like all those witnessing things, if you died today, where would you spend eternity? Guess what? It all comes down to Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, the Bible says you spend eternity in hell. If you know Jesus and you've received the salvation that he offers, then you spend eternity with him. That's the conversation we need to have with the people we care about all right all right we get to sing one more song yay okay you get to respond to god however god calls you to i'll be down here i'll pray with you about anything if you need to know jesus we'll stop and introduce you to jesus but otherwise you can talk to god right where you are and you can respond to him okay let's pray god thank you Thank you for this day that you've made that we can rejoice and be glad in you and that we can be grateful and thankful and sing about it and talk about it and, and, and really tell others why we're grateful and why we're thankful. And God, help us not to neglect that. Help us not to be, be, be negligent in those things. God, I just pray that we would, we would talk about what's important to us. And please, God, let it not be football or, or traffic. or God, let it be Jesus. Let us talk about Jesus. God, I thank you again that this is what and who you've called us to. So God, I praise you for worship. I praise you for the opportunity of worship. I praise you for this hall that you've given us to meet in week after week, hour after hour, that we can lift high the name of Jesus. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.